Hello my soccer universe. Well, you know that talking about Serie A is one of my favorite things to do on this channel. And by the way, I just had posted a Serie A review video uh, at the end of last uh, week. With the happenings on Friday, you know, just before I post, 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 post the video, what Napoli did to Juventus, uh, that totally calls for another one. Because this was a statement when this is really showing that Napoli are in a different league. And yes, I'm doing this video despite Milan having another shock of a poor performance, although they almost turned it around. Um, but this is all about Napoli. And a little bit about Atalanta. Because, I mean, uh, scoring eight goals is also not something to sneer at. But uh, uh, Napoli, 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 Napoli. They are truly... In the, at least in this season and so far in a league of their own within Italy. And they are definitely upper echelon in Europe. Amazing stuff how they then took apart Juventus. And I said it in my one minute video. This was a game that was actually, in the first of it, it was competitive in a way. Yes, Napoli better. But then how they completely took apart a Juventus team that had won 18 in a row not conceded a goal and now they give up five boy 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 and what what, what makes it even more fun is that it's not that they are winning by a huge amount they're playing excitingly there's so much energy in there it's brilliant football that they're showing it is absolutely a joy to watch and hail to napoli hail to spalletti we know spalletti has still the reputation that his sides are very entertaining and they cannot win. I hope that, like Pioli last season, he finally gets his Serie A title. Well, because the ones that he got for Zenit, I don't really count. Let's be honest about that. Uh, the two Milan clubs, yeah, both very flat perform performances. Milan, probably should, uh, after that, for example, probably should, should, should have lost. Uh, Inter scored early. Then do the minimum to get the win against Verona across, of course, their meeting in the Super Cup, which I'm, despite it being a Milan der a Derby, I'm probably not going to watch that one. Uh, so, And I will not talk about this one in this channel unless something really amazing would happen. But uh, no, like the Spanish Super Cup, I don't, I don't recognize a, uh, a tournament that is played in a country, especially when that country plays huge amounts of sums of money. Uh, but the two Roman teams were also uh, pretty good, um, you know, getting wins. There's also a flip side to the story that Sassuolo, who has been there always kind of scraping onto the Euro, European sports, they're definitely the, the seventh or eighth best team in Italy. Uh, for a long period at the moment, their relegation threatened. So uh, that is something to watch as well. But I would say, you know, I already said many things about Napoli Juventus. I made the one minute summary. I want to say again, I mean, what Osman and Quarazgalia uh, did together. And may I tell you how much I love those Napoli home jerseys. They are, they are really great. And yeah, <sighs> they will not be cheap, but I really want to get one of them. <laughs> Uh, but you know, let's see, this might be a little bit later. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know it. But um, the way those two combined, uh, there was a little bit Quaratskeli. I was going, yeah, you're not playing all, all, the, all the great, you know, maybe it's coming down. No, he was really there. And uh, while Oziman scored two, it was Quaratskeli who actually assisted um, more or less three goals because, I mean, the opener through Oziman. It was an uh, artistic show from Kvartskelia Kvart 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 that uh, Chesney just parries and then Oseman uh, con con converts. So in a way, an in uh, hockey assist, if you like, for Oseman there. Uh, then the way he takes the 2-0, two two although I have, I, have, I have to say this was kind of a, 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 little, a little bit odd. odd goal. I have to have said the 2-0 uh, and the 2-1. This was basically the two of them trading goals that were very, uh, rather poorly defended overall. But what Quaratskelia showed afterwards, it's just brilliant stuff. Absolute brilliant stuff. He's probably at the moment my favorite player in Serie A. And so if I get an Napoli jersey, you can sure, be sure that there will be the number 77. For two reasons. A, 77 is cool. Three reasons. He's a great player. And number three, I like this, the long name on the back. 
Beat as that may, when you came back, just this few minutes before the half, there was the equalizer in there. It was definitely in there. And you were actually on the front, I don't want to say on the front foot, but they had a chance to get something out of the game and then completely fell apart with a wonderful Rachmani goal after Quaratskelia corner. And then if uh, sh shortly after it's 4 4 1 and Elmos make makes it 5 1, it could have gotten really, really, really ugly because even Raspadori had a great chance. It was scintillating. The Maradona Stadium um, vibrating, shaking everything in there. And I think it was so fitting. You know, at the beginning of, of, of the season, they unveiled the statue of Maradona. He's now in the players' tunnel and he kind of spurns on uh, all the players. It, it was so, you look at the tunnel, oh yeah, there's Maradona back there. It's just, man, 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 man. I think if Napoli and they shoot at this moment, it is really hard to not see Napoli winning this title. Really. Uh, if they win this, uh, this might be the wildest celebrations in Europe that we have seen in a while. And I also th already thought that the last two Serie A titles received rave celebrations. We saw some great ones uh, in other leagues. That, that one, that will be the one. That will be the one. And yeah, uh, for a team that ahead of the season, everyone kind of doubted because they lost Insigne, they lost Mertens, uh, two talismans, and it's, they were always mentally uh, seen as mentally weak and now coming out like this. Absolute. And I think it's probably the only way that Napoli, they cannot win a close title, title but I think they really have to run away with it. Absolutely amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. Which was everything uh, <laughs> that Milan was not. The first half an hour in that game, Lecce could have taken Milan apart, a uh, left and right. Uh, there was only two nil. Can okay, I mean the first goal? And I love because I always, you know, you always look at the opening minutes. How who is starting with energy? It was really that yeah, Milan tried a little bit of energy, but it was not very, very, very exciting. And literally, you combust because Kalulu cannot play out uh, per perfectly, and it ends up being Anandes deflecting the shot into his own net. <sighs> One nil left. Let's say was okay. Maybe they can find a five. No, there was nothing. There was really, really nothing uh, coming. It was only in the last 15, 20 minutes. I mean, uh, the 2 0 by Baschirotto was a great header. And again, I you cannot blame uh, the goal in either case directly on the goalie. But I always have have a have the feeling with Tatarujano's presence or lack thereof, the defense just doesn't look right. And in midfield, yes, you lost Kessie, and it shows. Unfortunately, it shows uh, because uh, you cannot uh, flip around and they're in. Yes, they're, they're, they're dangerous, but the midfield does, does look right. There's a lot of pressure on defense. And in addition, there's a lot of pressure on, on defense because they have to cover for a goal, goalkeeper who doesn't have a commanding presence and also slow reflexes. That's, I think, the heart at the problem for, for, for Milan. On the positive side, Leao pulls one back. Then uh, 12 minutes later, Calabria, after a nice Giroud assist, head, heads it in. It's 2-2. Uh, at that point, Milan were really pressing, but totally in, in, in the game. Messias almost should have made it 3-2. Initially, it was initially given an offside, but would have counted because he was played onside. But then they also tried really, really hard to lose that game again. And so, in a way, I have to be happy with the 2-2. It also solidified Milan in the second spot, although it is really, 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 really tight. Because Inter get the win against Verona, third minute, Lautaro Martinez, but then everything else. I mean, they were just cruising because it's all about the freaking Super Cup and I just don't get it. Uh, flat, 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 flat performance and yeah. It's a ridiculous trophy that is given out. Yes, if Milan should win it, I will of course be happy, but um, I really don't want to make much. Uh, Lazio put Sassolo in more trouble. I mean, Lazio did not have a good start to the year. Now they finally get there and they score in each half in stoppage time to secure a 2-0 win, which actually was a rather important win for four for them. Maybe they get some momentum going, although this would be for me personally at the wrong, wrong time, given who they will play uh, on the weekend. Uh, Udin, uh, shock loss for Torino to Spezia. You know, you beat Milan in, in, in a cup, you look uh, quite good overall, and now you lose to Spezia. Okay, great for you. 
Udinese, who started the season so brightly, also took uh, or, or lead, even seemingly double lead, was not, not counted, but also Sansone had a goal uh, um, call called off, wearing, of course, uh, Bologna. In the second half, though, Bologna turned around with Sansone getting the equalizer. And then it's Austrian Stefan Porsche, yeah, Anato, which is out with an injury. There's another Austrian getting uh, the winning goal. Big one for Bologna. Atalanta 8 to over Salernitana. It was a crazy game. I mean, it, basically, every shot on goal was a goal. Uh, Jerry Mboa get, getting the early one, then uh, DR uh, five minutes later, I mean, within 10 to 10 minutes, we had it 1 1. And we thought this is a real game, but then penalty scheme for Atalanta. I have to say that Fazio foul, yes, it was probably initiated uh, inside the box where it fell outside. It looked a little bit odd. And Adam Lukleman steps up and Ochoa is actually saving it, but it goes in. Uh, Scalvini then later makes it 3-1 and then another penalty given to 38. The Cope Miners sees safe, but he takes the rebound, makes it 4-1. And then Rasmus Hoyland, and this was a typical Hoyland goal. I've seen him, he played for Sturm Graz. Uh, it's really great to see a playoff coming from the Austrian Bundesliga and also tearing it up in Italy a little bit. Uh, great goal to make it 5-1 at the half. And then they just kept on going. Lukman, uh, Caviglia also scores uh, uh, one for South Salernitana. So it was 6-2 and then Ederson and former Salernitana player uh, Zortea make it an 8-2. This was big for Atalanta because maybe they're getting a little bit back in the groove. They have to, basically the good squad from... The first Corona season, 920, has um, kind of been reshuffled a little bit and it actually looks quite interesting at the moment. This could be a big one. Roma, a rather unexciting win, except the excitement came that Dybala scores both goals and both are assisted by Tammy Abraham, the game, of course. Uh, being also largely influenced by a uh, yellow red through Dodo in the 24th minute already. So Fiorentina always a man down. I didn't get what Fiorentina had to play in the black jerseys at Roma. Yes, there was contrast there, but it, it just didn't look right. I think the white jerseys would have done much better. So it was also we really, visually just a little bit of an odd game uh, there. Roma, to me, yes, they're getting their results. You see them up in the upper echelon of the teams that won this weekend. Um, I just... Um, there's something they, they also this is a team that doesn't look right in a way uh, but at least they get getting points and then uh, yesterday evening Empoli uh, beat Sampdoria 1-0 uh, and yes yeah, Sampdoria continue to be in trouble unfortunately because looking at the standings Verona, Sampdoria, Cremonese going down at the moment uh, Sassuolo dangling dangerously there but then there's also Spezia and Salernitana Monza with another win moving uh, more and more into safety but there's a clear junk that you know Verona is already Verona and Sampdoria already 7 points off the pace up top Napoli Clear up top, it is an absolute canter that they lead uh, Serie, Serie A by. And then it gets really tight. The next three are all within one point. And even the Lazio, Atalanta, Roma pack is just three points behind that. So it's kind of behind Napoli. Not, not, it's very, very cozy. Uh, too cozy if you, if for my liking. I actually would love to see uh, at least Milan separate themselves a little bit. I mean, maybe uh, I don't think Milan will get back into a title race unless there's a real big form uh, swing coming. The one thing is that, it has to be always said, Milan are not that much off the pace from last season when they won the title. However, there was not this overarching, you know, this super team in there. So, yeah, it's really hard to see uh, Napoli losing the title, who are, of course, also, when you look at the difference uh, for the, uh, for, uh, the best performing team in Serie A, duh, in a way. Uh, clear favorites. It is Inter now slightly ahead of Milan, but, you know, uh, it, it is pretty clear that Inter Milan and then Juve, those are the teams that will make the Champions League spots and the three that are currently going down are all, also the ones expected to go down. Uh, next weekend, and I will do a video after that, that one too, we have ac actually a couple of really interesting games. I mean, uh, we have a Southern Derby, Southern Town against Napoli, and that's really a derby because those two cities are rather, rather close uh, to, to together. We have a Juventus against Atalanta, an Atalanta team that can score a lot of goals, and a Juve team that uh, was sturdy up until now, so I really want to see 
how they fight, fight because they are Empoli is a really rough opponent for Inter who play on Monday. Then on Tuesday we have Lazio Milan, which is always a classic in Serie A. So um, will take a little bit longer until you get that, that video, but surely there will be a video. Before this round, there's of course the second round of cup games. Watch Napoli against Cre Cremonese. There might be more goals in there, or maybe not because they're saving. There's not really a great game in there because all the favorites play at home as typically for Coppa Italia. So that was it from me from Italy. Boy, is Napoli a fun team to watch. Absolutely fun team team to watch. And yeah, I really don't see them not winning the title. But what is your opinion on Serie A this season? Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.